Rudolph Giuliani turned out to be a titanic fraud. That's on him. Mark Meadows turned out to be a fraud, and that's on him. Boris Epstein turned out to be a fraud, and that's on him. All of the Trump detritus, all of them, have done damage to this country. And now it's up to us to say enough, to end this madness, to repudiate it. It's not enough for President Biden to win in November. He must win decisively. He must win decisively so this madness can end permanently. It is time to bury this toxic poison back under the deep ground and cork it with concrete. It is the 25th of April, and there are 194 days left until the American people will decide between President Biden and the accused felon, Donald Trump, who will sit behind the Resolute desk and command the most powerful nuclear arsenal in world history. Joe Biden or this man? the sleepy Don, an indicted criminal who cannot stay awake for his trial, who rages and seethes, who intimidates, who tweets through the night, who is losing control. A great question is at hand. Will the American people measure up? Soon we'll know. This is the warning. Another day, more indictments. This time from the state of Arizona, leading the docket in the dock, once again, the disgraced and bankrupt former America's mayor, Rudolph W. Giuliani. There is no person across American history, with the possible exception of Benedict Arnold, who has had a greater fall. A name that was once widely admired across all of America is now a laughingstock. Rudolph Giuliani is a degenerate a liar, a hypocrite, and a stooge. His entire life's work was undone by his fantastical ego, which is also a brittle one. This man, a former mayor of New York City, became Donald Trump's valet, his handmaid. He served him in every way imaginable until it led to his ruin, along with the former White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, Another lying conniver who was a vandal for every single day that he served in the United States Congress. He got to Washington and did everything he could to hurt America for the purposes of making himself famous. He knew that if he could be a big enough demagogue, he could get all the way to the top. And Mark Meadows made it to the White House, into the Oval Office. This man with no principle, no judgment, low intellect, had access to the nation's most closely guarded secrets. When you think about our national decay, and you think about the collapse of probity, and rectitude, and morality, and decency, it is astonishing. Mark Meadows is the exact polar opposite of a man named Andy Card who served with honor as George W. Bush's White House Chief of Staff. Mark Meadows managed even to exceed the scumbaggery and criminality of H.R. Holderman, who was probably the worst White House Chief of Staff in history, until Meadows. And now Mr. Meadows will have his day in court, along with another Trump sycophant, Boris Epstein, all of this has been a fantastical fraud. When our progeny look back on this era, what will they say about us? That we permitted a man to take political power who ran a fake university and a tangle of fraudulent charities who lied over and over again, who is recorded on tape pretending to be a PR spokesperson named John Barron talking about the virtues of Donald Trump. This creature from Queens, that he has become the dominant figure in American society 
is an indictment of the nation and its character in this moment. It can be no other way. And the country has to understand that all of us have an obligation to be involved in the renewal of the country and a recovery from this moment that we go on a voyage together in search of something better than this low man in this low crowd of people. Look at Ted Cruz. Look at the change in appearance of Ted Cruz. Let's look at some pictures. Pictures of decrepitude and decay, of sloth. Let's look at Joe Biden in 2016. Look at him today. Yeah, he's older, but he looks the same. Let's look at Trump. He's more decayed, more bloated, more crazy looking today, but he too looks largely the same, doesn't he? Look at Ted Cruz. If you're a Texas voter, you appreciate why Ted Cruz looks like this. You understand why Ted Cruz doesn't have morning events. You understand why this hollow man with no character has changed so profoundly in Washington, right? This low man ran away from his responsibilities to Cancun. He won't defend his wife from the viciousness of a bully's attacks. He won't defend his father. It turns out the entire Trump enterprise is just an incandescent fraud from top to bottom. The absurd allegation that Rafael Cruz was involved in the Kennedy assassination completely made up. Part of the conspiracy of lies that has gone on for nine years, that is intimidated, struck fear into the hearts of cowards like Cruz, like Josh Hawley, another hollow man who incited an insurrection and then hid in a closet. Meadows, Epstein, Trump, Steve Bannon, Stephen Miller, Sidney Powell, Mike Lindell, Matt Schlapp, the Nazi Nick Fuentes. These are some of the lowest and most despicable people in the country. Yet they somehow have managed to amass tremendous power, tremendous resources, and they have an agenda. And their agenda is fundamentally to transform the character of the American government from one where people serve imperfectly an idea, the country, under an oath to the Constitution. What they want to do is replace that with an oath to Trump. This is the core meaning of Project 2025. This is the aspiration of people who wish to take power by any means necessary, and who have already indicated that unless they win, they will challenge the result of the election. They will claim that it was stolen, and they will use violence if they must to take power. The argument is clear. They disdain democracy. And they're becoming less and less shy about saying it out loud. Unlike the MAGA movement, when I talk about they and I talk about them, I'm specific. I'm talking about Trump and I'm talking about Tucker Carlson and I'm talking about the legion of useful idiots who service Vladimir Putin by spreading his propaganda all over the United States, poisoning the minds of the American people. I'm talking about the Republican members of Congress who were involved in a conspiracy of lies, who used their power as committee chairman to defame the president of the United States, who used their power abusing the process of government over and over again. This moment in time in America, 194 days, is perfectly clear. There is a manifest threat at hand. 
And that threat is sitting in a Manhattan courtroom surrounded by a phalanx of unprincipled men like Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz and many more. And there's another type of jury. There's a political jury, if you will. And our trial is an election and it is time to make a judgment in the country about a whole horde of people, a cohort that lacks principle and conviction and any integrity whatsoever that does not care about ordinary people. Remove them from power. We can do this. It is our birthright. The failure to do so will have profound consequences. Our politics will grow more violent. It will grow more extreme. And the global security situation will continue to deteriorate. I spent a Passover Seder with a young couple who had just immigrated to Canada she was from Belarus. He was from Ukraine. They came from Israel. It's their second war. They're no different than Americans, except for the fact that they have not had the opportunities to live in peace and freedom that we take for granted. There is a simple truth. There are two major wars underway in the world, one in the Middle East and one in Europe. And they will draw inexorably closer to American shores if this MAGA movement regains political power and begins what will become the age and era of the dictator. Only this time, the person in the White House won't be Franklin Roosevelt. It will be a person on the side of the dictator. And in four years' time, his capacity to do real chaos should be indisputable. Donald Trump is promising us a police state where millions will be locked up, put into camps awaiting deportation. Think this through. What does that look like? Does it mean checkpoints on your block, on your street, at your corner? Papers, please on the train, at the grocery store? Is this what we want? Do we want big government like that? Do we want government peering in the window, sitting in the confessional, with us in the delivery room, with us from cradle to grave? This is not what free people want. This is not what Americans have ever wanted. And yet it is the proposition at hand offered by the MAGA extremists under the banner of the oldest lie there is, which is trust us, give us power, and we'll fix all the problems. We'll take away all the complexity and make things simple again. We'll make everything great and good and pure again. You see, all of the problems can be fixed if we just point out who's to blame. And the thing that the people to blame always have in common is how few in number they actually are. And yet, history teaches us over and over again, the demagogue will use they and them to rally a community of us's against the days and thems against the threat. And history teaches us when somebody promising punishment and persecution takes office in political power, there has never been an instance where they have not followed through on it ever. And so how is it that we have arrived at the edge of an abyss where the lie and the truth stand equal in the public square, where a presidential candidate is promising a police state, promising to harass and punish dissent, promising to arrest political opponents, promising mass deportation camps. How have we gotten here? 
we have become tolerant of what is intolerable. And it is time to face up to the danger before it is too late. Rudolf Giuliani turned out to be a titanic fraud. That's on him. Mark Meadows turned out to be a fraud, and that's on him. Boris Epstein turned out to be a fraud, and that's on him. All of the Trump detritus, all of them, have done damage to this country. And now it's up to us to say enough, to end this madness, to repudiate it. It's not enough for President Biden to win in November. He must win decisively. He must win decisively so this madness can end permanently. It is time to bury this toxic poison back under the deep ground and cork it with concrete. The hate, the division, the demagoguery, the nationalism, the jingoism, the venom. Nine years of time has been wasted when America could have been building, unifying, making progress in so many areas. Instead, we have become the captives and hostages of the lowest man to ever walk amongst us, who was given the highest honor that could be given and desecrated it as if he pissed on it like the protesters did the floor of the House of Representatives and U.S. Senate, except they weren't protesters, were they? They were insurrectionists and criminals and traitors who carried the Confederate flag through the rotunda of the Capitol 160 years after the Battle of Gettysburg, finally, penetrating the citadel of democracy, wrecking the peaceful transfer of power, desecrating the high ideas and ideals of the country through criminal acts of violence and mayhem and murder, all of it incited by a selfish old man who can't stay awake in a court. It is an incredible hour in this country, but it's time to end it. This is The Warning. I'm Steve Schmidt. This is The Warning. And I invite you to join, subscribe on our Substack, on our YouTube channel. Follow us. Welcome to the community.